Well, it is a, a messy, stinky, toxic problem affecting cities and counties across the country to the tune of millions, perhaps billions of water rate payers across the country. And it seems the convenience of all those wipes that we love to use from the kitchen to our baby's backside and wherever else uh, has some serious consequences. Tim Joyce is here with more on flushable wipes that uh, aren't quite so flushable. Personal wipes, we use them all over the house, car, and garage. We use them on the go, but when we get rid of them, it's causing some big problems. Sewer overflows, pump and pipe clogs, but it's hard to calculate exactly how much it's costing water ratepayers around the country. In our state, there are several options that lawmakers are considering to fix this messy, stinky problem. Cecil Caldwell and Mike Taylor are on the front lines of a battle that public works departments nationwide are losing. It is really bad. We followed them three stories down into the smelly underground to see what's happening under streets and neighborhoods in Seattle and all across the country. A splash of raw sewage clears the way for Pump 54 disassembly. These crews respond to emergencies like clogged pipes and broken pumps all the time, day and night, sometimes four times a month. So the time limit can vary from two, three, four hours. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. The culprit can be anything that washes in from city streets, but most often these days... There's a little rag stuck in there. The city says it's a household product we all seem to think is okay to flush, personal disposable wipes. It gets jammed up in the uh, impellers. These images show the worst, the disgusting clog Seattle has seen so far with wipes that in reality, they say, are not so flushable after all. The reality is that even though these products are labeled moist and flushable, um, they really don't break down when they get into our sewer system, and that can actually lead to disastrous results. Andrew Lee is the deputy director for drainage and wastewater at Seattle Public Utilities. He says it's hard to quantify the cost of the thousands and thousands of staff hours, which ends up in higher rates for homeowners. And when they can't catch a pump break in time, the result is bad for all of us. They lead to clogs um, in the pump stations themselves, so the pumps will stop running. And um, that will lead to sewage backing up, sometimes into people's homes, um, sometimes onto the streets, and, um, and one of the worst effects is obviously into the environment. 185,000 gallons of sewage spilled into Puget Sound this summer, closing Golden Gardens and several other popular beaches for days. Tacoma has avoided any sewage spills, but their waste stream is full of wipes of all kinds. Wipes and other debris have destroyed at least one pump, and the treatment plant there says they dump about 7 to 10 yards of this kind of stinky mess every week. For creatures in the water of Puget Sound, we have no idea the true cost of some of these spills. Just because something flushes down the drain does not mean the wastewater system can handle it. You can flush a golf ball down the drain, um, but you shouldn't. Um, and you shouldn't flush a wet wipe down the drain either. State Representative Joe Fitzgibbons' district includes West Seattle, Burien, and Vashon Island. So lots of waterfront neighborhoods full of constituents concerned about water quality and beach safety. It's really rewarding when you get to help solve a problem. Personal wipes originated in the 1950s, but have soared in popularity over the decades. It's resulted in a host of educational campaigns online that go mostly unnoticed. This one from Seattle Public Utilities only has about 300 views since June of 2017. So the word is not getting out. So I think the solution that makes the most sense to me and the solution that a number of other states are looking at is a labeling requirement that says you can't label a product as flushable unless it's actually been tested to be flushable, to actually be disposable through the wastewater system. One of the biggest manufacturers of wipes is Kimberly Clark that owns the Cottonelle brand and claims on their website that their flushable wipes do break down. The Association of Non-Woven Fabric Industry, also called INDA, represents Kimberly Clark and manufacturers of all sorts of wipes. The organization's president, Dave Roos, sells Q13 News in an emailed statement that flushable wipes are in recent studies under 2% of what can be identified. And even then, only there because they're caught up in other items. Flushable wipes were developed to meet a real consumer need for hygiene, health, and convenience. Roos says for certain wipes to be deemed flushable, they have to go through a tough seven-step criteria. 
but manufacturer standards for what makes something flushable doesn't pass the smell test for Representative Fitzgibbon. I'm skeptical of that. I think that the wastewater operators have more experience dealing with this on the back end, actually cleaning out the clogs in uh, sewer pipes and at pump stations. But if getting rid of the word flushable on all wipes doesn't change behavior, Fitzgibbon says he's be willing to look into a surcharge on wipes to go to sewer districts to offset the cost of the damage they do. He says a ban is unlikely at this point because the wipes are just too popular and too convenient. The Wipes Manufacturing Association says a public education campaign is what's needed, citing Portland, Maine's experience, which they say reduced the amount of baby wipes being flushed in half. In the meantime, Cecil, Mike, and their colleagues will continue their battle underground to keep things flowing as smoothly as they can. You know, um, hopefully you know, people can really understand how important it is for them to not put those, those baby wipes or any other type of material into their, their toilets or in our plumbing system because it does jam up our system. You know, it's job security for us. Kind of hard to hear Cecil down there once the pump is back going, but he says this is not the job security that they want. And he says it's frustrating because their battle just never ends. Now, you can help those guys and your own neighborhood, maybe even your own basement, by only flushing the three P's. The third P is paper, and of course, you know what number one and number two are. Changing the labeling requirements on personal wipes is something a handful of other states are considering, and Washington would consider the change in the next legislative session in January. I'm Tim Joyce, Q13 News. Tim.